Cool Gart. I'm Alicia Malone. <laughs> and this is Tick, Tick, Boo! It's been a long time, Maud. I'm not used to saying my name next to your name. I know, I know. We have had a little bit of a hiatus, but don't worry, the wine has been poured. It's going very slowly, I feel. I feel like internet's just gone, you know what, not today. I know, I feel like I'm in slow motion. Yeah. But hopefully it works for people watching. We decided to do a bit of a Q&A sesh this time around. Oh, you can hear it. You can hear it. Just uh, <gasps> see that. Yep. <laughs> Why? 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 You must have it open somewhere. Oh, that's what's going on. Sorry. I mean, I'm just being a little technologically retarded right now. Yeah. Well, there it is. Whoa, it's definitely bad. <laughs> God, what's with our internet? Oh, I, I know. We can't even blame anyone else. It's like, it's only us. It's only the us. The is on us. Anyway, maybe it'll catch up. Um, no, that's all done. Cheers, my dear. Mm. So this is a nice one, the Miseru. Cheers. It's a Pinot Noir, uh, and it was on sale a, a couple of times, and it's quite delicious. Yeah, you got a few bottles, which is great. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, so we're going to do a Q and A. I didn't brush my teeth before. <laughs> you didn't. That's all right, because I got wine. But I was going to say it'd be worse if you did. Mm. Yeah. All right. Hey, hey James. Bumbling idiot says, "Welcome back, Maud and Alicia." And we've been sent a couple of questions already yes. by Twitter. Here we go. Sandy Young. She wants to know: dark chocolate or milk? I find that racist because <laughs> white chocolate isn't in there. I love dark chocolate. Dark chocolate, I prefer way over milk chocolate. What, in order of the three, where would they go? Dark milk, white. I like white the least, but any chocolate. I've never made a chocolate I didn't like, but uh, this is white, perfect. yeah, not so much. White milk, dark for me. There you go. And We're like complete opposite. top deck for those in Australia. So when we have Easter, and yeah. all the chocolate comes to us because that's what's going to happen this Easter. You we, get the white. Yeah. I split the medium. The yeah. Chocolate. Yes. There you go. Great. <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> Easter's in a month. Oh, I like this other one. Oh, from... Is it more Easter? A month, you say? Oh, is it? A yeah. month. <laughs> that's scary. Sorry, I got distracted because I was reading Sandy Young's other question, yes. which is really good. Yes. What do you oh. consider each other's greatest achievement? I think that's really Ooh, nice. That's a beautiful question. So, Maud, what is my greatest achievement? Uh, it's deflecting uh, answering when you <laughs> don't know uh, and re <laughs> relying on... Thank you. No, yeah, no. Um, your greatest achievement, I remember when you got Screen Junkies. Uh, no, no, Film Junkies. Oh, film when I got my own jam. show. Jamming of the films. Yeah. You had your own show and not only did you host the damn thing, but you produced it, you wrote it, you sourced guests every week. That, for me, I was like, you are so talented because it's not <laughs> just one thing that you're doing. You're doing the whole show. You were doing the job of, like, six people yeah. every week. It only had one season, 13 episodes, but, hey, that was great. And yes. I, it was in a studio just down the road in Hollywood. It was and, and people would go on it and they'd be like, I'm like what? That was amazing. This is yours, really? How can I get this? And it's like, bitch, please. <laughs> <laughs> like I worked hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then people would also watch the show and be like, well, how can I be on that? Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, I, I, I was on us, but I was never yeah. being like, man, I'm so proud of my best friend oh, right now. So sweet. Well, I'd say in a similar way, one of your greatest achievements. You have many, but one of your greatest ones is Geek Bomb. <laughs> dot net hey. the website which you run and you created yeah i did that from scratch when you had some free time hmm. and put it together and now it's grown into this big thing you've got a following you've got t-shirts you've got t-shirts and hoodies it's really awesome to see people say talk about bomb. Geek geek bomb. yeah and people know about geek bomb and know what it stands for and i think that's really exciting yeah celebrating geekdom and celebrating geekdom and i love how you started with it being a place for ladies yeah who weren't allowed to be geeky a safe haven for ladies to geek out and now it's expanded to both sexes anyone who wants to let their geek flag fly yeah and go to geekbomb.net mind you Next those Wednesday. guys know that they have to wear pink and then they realize that they have to be <gasps> pro feminists uh and that's the stipulation still yeah it's, like, it's pro women pro both sexes yeah equality equality yeah which is a great thing and you need more of that yeah, but I love my, my ladies talking about and films. Another question <clears throat> from Twitter, which I really liked. 
was from Joshua Willingham. Joshi! Who said, Alicia, what's one film you'd want Maud to watch? And Maud, what's one video game you'd want Alicia to play? I think I know which video game you want me to play. So Zelda. bad. Oh, my God. It's the best game ever. The music's incredible. The game. I mean, you know what? I think it would just help our friendship. So every time I go, mm, I just want to call a poner up and be like, see ya. You'd be like, what are you talking? No, you'd be like, oh, you want to play a poner song on yeah. the ocarina and then your horse, a poner rocks up and you're saying this because you need a ride. And I'd right. be like, there's my Zelda punt. Yeah, I would get your references a lot more, I'm sure. But the thing is, I'm not against gaming. I just am terrible at it. I don't have a if Nintendo 64 here. If but I've a got wall, it. I've got it on the DS. If there's a wall, I'll just smash into it repeatedly like mm -hmm. this. Like mm -hmm. I just can't. I don't have the hand-eye coordination to be able to do that. But I don't think I did when I started. Now, I actually noticed when I was driving that. today that when the red light turned green, it was unnatural how I was like, Zip, boom, it's like, I kind of looked around at the guy that was telling me and I was like, video games. <laughs> <laughs> Got the point. Well, a movie that I would like you to watch. Shawshank? Oh, you haven't seen that? <laughs> oh, okay. Definitely Shawshank that's my favourite film Godfather? of all time. Yes. Godfather. Yeah. You should watch The Godfather. I know you said before, it doesn't have dragons in it. Oh, no, it's really great, interesting story about family and it's so yeah. well shot and it's really entertaining as well. So it's not just like a guy's gangster flick. Okay. There's so much more to it than that. Okay. So, and it's got my man, Marlon Brando. I like Marlon Brando. He's great. He's one, he's one of the better actors. Yeah, he's one of the best actors of all time. Exactly. We've got, uh, we're also doing the Q&A on the video. So if you see the events page, you can write in there, uh, which we've seen James do with Welcome Back More and Alicia. Uh, but we've also got um, uh, like, DC Bowling. Yeah, like Here we go. Boom. He's on to it. He said, if you guys had an actor or actress for a best friend, <laughs> who would it be? Hmm. Who would it be? Mine was always Cameron Diaz for so long. Yeah. She was just so vivacious and fun and funny and humble and down for anything. But I think that's slowly becoming, well, Emma Stone and or mm. J-Law. Oh, yeah. Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. She seems like a lot of fun. I agree with Emma Stone. Yeah. When you go and speak to her at these junkets, you feel like you know her. You yeah. feel like you could chat to her off screen, and she's just so great to, Hold on, though. to talk about. You kind of look like Emma Stone, oh, and I kind of feel like Jennifer Lawrence is my spirit animal. And everything, <laughs> like, when she's like, oh, where's the pizza? I was like, I have said that every day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's many memes to be had from your face and many gifts. Falling over and going, oh. Yeah, like them, uh, I definitely relate to that. Yeah, I'd say Emma Stone or someone I'd love to hang out with, uh, Josh Brolin. Okay. I spoke to him for Sin City 2 and I know, then I also for you. Inherent Vice. Yeah, and both at Comic-Con and also in the Junket. And he is great. He's so much fun. He's really, um, you feel like you can chat to him for hours. You feel like you know him. And the best thing is he is a film geek. Yeah, you guys would. He's the kind of so guy that's like bonded over the fact that we both prefer to stay at home Friday nights and watch movies, classic movies, movies yes. than go out. Um, it's like the whole if you were having a dinner with anyone dead or alive, you would just have like the film school. There. Yeah. Mm. Oh, you would have like great. a film club alumni kind of deal happening. Yes. So we got another one from Claudio Mendez. Hello, first question. How are you doing? I think it's a valid question. A lot of people ask it in a superfluous manner and they actually don't even listen to the response. And I believe in it. You ask the question, you have to ask it with the intent to understand the answer. I'm pretty good. Yeah, after all that, I'm pretty good. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to go in, in depth about I I your feelings for today. Um, I had a good day. Tea. Yeah. Went for a hike in the morning. Um, I felt like I did something. Yeah. I had lunch. So you had lunch. I did AMCI and a few other things. Oh, wait, I unboxed. CI in the spotlight. Oh, yeah. No, you finish off your day though, because I'll rant a little bit. Um, and I'm feeling pretty good. You know, I feel like I'm finally catching up on sleep after Sundance. That mm. took it out of me. Damn. Afterwards, I just, the, those days when I got back, my eyes felt really heavy and I was really exhausted, but now I feel better. But yeah, you were excited because, you know, 
got a PlayStation 4, not any old PlayStation 4, the special edition 20 year anniversary PlayStation 4, which is that Matt Gray of the very first Sony PlayStation that came out. And I, uh, Alicia helped me film not the unboxing. Not ignoring the questions. Yeah. Right? She helped me film the unboxing for it. And it's up on the YouTube play page. Plage. Plage? <laughs> what is that a combination of? Plage and page. Plage. Page, page. YouTube. YouTube link. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, you can see what it looks like. My genuine reaction of <laughs> what it looked like. It was kind of like that. Um, and I also want to chat PlayStation games with everyone. I want to know everyone's most memorable game, the best game. And I think they can be very different things because most memorable doesn't necessarily mean the best. Mm -hmm. Um, and what game I should play next. A lot of you going, the last of us, are you kidding me? Is this a trick question? Well, Eva V AKA evil on Twitter says, a movie is made based on your lives. Who would you choose to play you and who would direct it? Hey! I love that. So who I would choose to play me? I'll go with Emma Stone. Yeah. I, I, someone said they look like Emily Blunt the other day, but I don't see they it. They were high. I don't see it. I think it's probably just I mean, a still similar compliment. accent. But she's got round eyes. You've got very orange eyes. I say eyes. Emma Stone. You do. She's got the red hair. I don't think I look much like her, but I would love yes, you do. to look like her. Um, and she's a great actress too. You look like Margot Robbie in that YouTube video that we did. Remember that? When you went, and I was like, like oh my God, you look like Margot Robbie. That's what I, someone said at Sundance. Yeah. She was in a film where she has darker hair and she was a bit more rugged. And I was like, oh, well, I'll well, take that. Yeah, dye hair red. I will take that. So, um, yeah, I'll get Emma Stone to play me. And who would I want to direct? Mm. Mm. Well, my life, I feel, is like a box of stuff. Okay. Romantic comedy, I was okay. going to say, where I'm just figuring things out, trying to figure things out. And I saw this great movie at Sundance called Sleeping with Other People, which was a really fun and fresh and modern and smart romantic comedy mm -hmm. directed by Leslie Headland. Oh. So I would have her, don't touch anything. Me. I would have her direct my uh, romantic comedy and uh, have a makeover montage and all that fun stuff. Oh, And a meet cute with a nice guy. Either that up, or oh. like a Howard Hawks classic movie and I would be Rita Hayworth. I was like, okay. who would be your love interest? Never mind. Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> Big dad I asked. Okay, so who would play you in a movie? What kind of movie? Where's the person? Uh, I think, <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> Either that or um, the cockroach wearing the man skin in Men in Black. <laughs> Same kind of vibe. <laughs> Sugar. Water. More. <laughs> There was something wrong with him. He kept asking for sugar and um, water. <laughs> I I would have Jennifer Lawrence play me because uh, I can't get. And then Laura Dern maybe later on. Yeah, Laura Dern. Or for sure. or no. What's um? I don't know. Vera Farmiga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah maybe I get Vera Farmiga to play me as well. Yeah. Um, who would direct it? What kind of movie would it be? Good trick. No, I hate tragedies. That's why I can't stand reading Shakespeare. No, I think it would definitely be a comedy. It would be a comedy. Yeah. But it wouldn't be slapstick and it wouldn't be fat joke, drug reference, Ugh. like what we've been seeing a lot lately. What would it be? Hmm. Well, who would direct it? That's what I'm trying to think. The other person that keeps coming back into my mind every single time is, uh, what's his name? Luke, uh, Luke, Luke Benson was the one that... Oh, was... Luke Benson? Yeah. <laughs> But he does action films. I know. He could put some action into my life. Okay, do an action film. Done. What kind of action? A, Still can't win. Still can't win. Uh, we've got one up here, which is kind of cool. Chris yeah. S, you know, we did break, break move to LA from Australia. What was the big culture shock moment when we moved to the US? Big culture shock moment 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 culture shock moment this is interesting because growing up in australia of course we get so much of american culture through tv and movies so we kind of know what to expect before yes like the we red cups at the party yeah we get excited about red those palm. things people don't believe me when i'm like red palm, red, and the blue ones every now and then you're like and the red ones. yeah you're like the red ones from the teen parties and the frats and stuff Dude. um so omega shock, alpha culture shock was I think, uh, well, for me, I think moving to LA in particular, I had to get used to not using so much self-deprecating humor as I would in Australia. So in Australia, you can't really say, I'm Alicia and I do this and I'm great. 
because people go, you're a wanker. Your head's so big. Calm down. Amazing. Yeah. In Australia, you'll say, I do this thing. Oh, um, oh, it doesn't matter. Like Kate oh, Blanchett no. would be like, oh, I just starred in a, a movie. But, you know, so there's so elves and no one will. It's not that interesting. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I just play an elf. So You diminish how you are. But here in LA, it's very important to talk up sometimes or just at least say exactly what hey, you're doing. this is my name. You may recognize me. I walked past the scene. Everyone's so confident that it took me a while to just kind of embrace that and, and not that I ever exaggerate anything that I do, but just say, yes, I do this and not have a blah, blah, blah joke at the end. So I think that was for me. Yeah, okay. about you? Driving on the other side of the road. Yeah. I did uh, play L.A. Noir on the PlayStation 3 for like two weeks and drive, like it's kind of like what Grand Theft Auto is as well, but like sit in this pretend car and go, on the right side of the road, take the right side on the corner. So the passenger in the gutter. But my favourite thing is the slang that I can no longer use and it's things that I didn't even know were weird. That were Australian. looks. Just like, well, it's a bit cold outside, you might want to rug up. Rug? Rug up? Why would I put a okay. rug up anywhere? Yeah. I used to always say, oh, that'll put a spanner in the works. Oh, and the first day in the office with three American men, I decided to <laughs> nut something out. Which means work it out. Yeah. In Australia does, does not mean that, that over here. You only need no. to do that once. No. Alrighty. Uh, what, would you want to do a tweet? Yeah, I'll do a tweet. Uh, I like this one from Henry Mertens, who's at rockfan360. Do you have an absolute favourite spot to sit in a movie theatre? Yes. Aisle seat because I like to go to the bathroom. Yeah, I have a small bladder. I pee a lot, and just in case I need to go during the movie, no, I don't want to disrupt oh, sorry. everyone. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Sometimes I'll just agonise over that. I'll be sitting in the middle, going, "Oh no, I just really? don't want to. Oh, oh, I don't want to go past and then have to come back." And oh my god. Oh. So aisle seat, I can get in and out quickly, and somewhere in the middle. What about you? Um. Like two thirds back and either a little to one side. That is specific. Full view. Full view. Specific. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you get the I don't ever view. want to go into the very, very back row and of extreme corner because I was fifteen as well and I know what happens in that corner. Don't ever sit on the seat. But if I have to, I mean, I'm pretty easy going. But when it comes to the very front row, I know people hate that. Hate that. Like that. Oh, no, I can't do but it. But sometimes at some dance, I was the only ones available. So I was like, okay, I'll yeah. do it. I'll do it. Commit. I just look like I've got an out of time. Take one, volatile. Do you have one or do you want me to do We've got one from Josh Willington. Hey! Oh, that's the, you already did that one. But he had good questions. Oh, here's the other one. What's one video game that I can play over and over? And Alicia, what is the one movie that you'll never get tired of watching? Ding. Well, I never get tired of watching Shawshank Redemption. And that is the truth because every time short Shawshank Redemption, every time I watch it, I see something new, and it's often on TV here. Not that we have cable anymore, but when I did, we used to always just I used to put it on, and no matter what spot it's on, you could just keep watching it to the end, and it's a good one just to put in the background. It's always inspiring, and it always makes me cry. That it why would you want to cry? cry? Why, why would you want to cry? It's cathartic. I don't cry in real life. Oh, maybe I that's it. Actually. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's just like a shame. No, you don't cry in movies. You've seen me cry. You, just, <laughs> you cry in real life, but you don't cry in movies. Whereas I really don't cry in real life that much, but in movies it's like. <laughs> no, you cry. I so love you. Oh, my God. And What's you're that? just ice cold and you're like, really? I'm like, it's the beautiful oh, music. Yeah. It gets me. Really? Um, but what's a video game you can play over and over and over again? Uh, this game that I'm playing at the moment, uh, I was telling you about it, and every time I was like, Alicia, I want to tell you I'm not the person that you you do not want to hear thyroid, but I'm going to glaze like, over anyway. What? This great indie film. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some bits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like, tell me about it. And then yeah. like, about 10 seconds in, I'll be like, no, I don't care. Or actually, I'm kind of impressed. There's a few that you've told me about. I'm like, that kind of sounds interesting. Like, I get shocked. <laughs> um, but it's Heroes of Might and Magic 3. I used to play it on PC when I was... Like, we are talking 13 years ago now. Uh, it was a 3DO now. Ubisoft's got it. Um, it's uh, available on PC and iPad. It's so good on the iPad. Hours gone. I'm just yeah. clicking away. I wish they had ex the expansions on there as well so I could keep playing. Uh, but it's. I think I posted a photo on my Twitter. It's And it's not a paid tweet. I bought it. $9.99. It's 
so good. And I've spoken to my brothers about it, and they're like, oh, oh. and I'm like, oh. and I'm like, oh. okay. yeah, so playing that one. Okay, well, uh, here's one from Mitchell Heron. Hey, Mitchell. Trent Gain on Twitter. What piece of Trent. entertainment hit you the most emotionally? So what, uh, video game or movie? Movies. That hit you the most, but do you think of a specific one that made you, I can think of one. Never Ending Story. Oh, That was the first oh, film I ever saw in a cinema and my mum had to drag me out of it because I was crying so much. Our tags, our tags. With our tags in the, the quicksand. That was very like, heartbreaking. I, ha- I was hiding under the seat and screaming and she was like, we have to leave. I was like, but I want to see the rest. She's like, no, you're making a scene. Get out. You were under the seat screaming. I was crying. so devastated. I remember just feeling that. And I think because it was the first one film I saw in a cinema that it had even more oh, of an effect on me. Yeah. Because I wasn't used to that kind of surround sound and the screen and everything. But he's pleading. I know. Okay. I know. Okay. And I had and horses. Like, and it's an actual horse. It's like, yeah. Oh, help. I had a horse. I grew up with horses. And so that killed me. What what uh, movie has been the most Definitely movie. Point? I don't really cry in video games. Um, because I'm controlling the character in a way, uh, but movies, it's like, I, I can't help it. And I think that that's kind of what triggers it a little bit more. There's a few, my mother, I, I, I used to watch m- movies with mum all the time. That's That was our thing. And the perfect storm got me <laughs> to the point where I continued to cry outside the cinema and mum had to hold me and pat me on the back. <laughs> and then because my mum is the same person as I am, decided to be so uh, condescending and everyone walking past going, oh, what's going on? She'd go... She's got a thing for fishermen. <laughs> they all died. They all died. And, you know, George Clooney. likes fishermen. I was just like, <laughs> fishermen. I feel like this. I like this one from Craig Sutton. Sutton. It says, uh, female Ghostbusters, or would you rather this cast be given an original IP to work with? It has an original IP to work with, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's... Oh, the cast who have a completely different thing. Yeah, so I would rather what, this What, like Bridesmaids cast... 2? No, I'd rather this cast with an original concept. It can be even the same plot. Just don't call it Ghostbusters. I'm so sick of these reboots that aren't yeah. really... They're not remakes. They're just reboots and they're... I understand. What was good? What did you like when you were uh, a kid? Let's make it up. Exactly. I understand the business side of things. We've spoken about this before, how Hollywood uses this because it's easy marketing and yep. people will go and see it because it's got the name already but uh it, it's totally different so no it's not ghostbusters call it like ghost hunters we say that a, a uh, female cast because about time we need more of that we need more movies that star all females and that's what paul feig is really good at he is funny so funny women that'd be good yeah yeah Rant done. Uh, what, there's a y'all in there and I'm not reading it because I don't have my glass of y'all. Wondering how y'all balance consuming so much content, movies, yeah. games, shows. For me, I used to have so much time as a kid when I could just sit on something like Ocarina of Time for months. Perfect content. Now there is, or perfectly content. Now there's so much content. Agreed. There's no time. That's Peter F. Hey, Peter, I have to agree with you because back in the day when we were playing Ocarina of Time, there was no DLC. It was just the game. Yeah, it'd take you a few weeks, if you mean, months, if you're you. I'm not saying I'm better. Um, but it, once the game's done, it's done. Now there is no such thing as a completed, finished game unless I just stop putting out DLC so that I forget about it. And a game does not just take two hours to watch. It takes a hundred hours to play. Yeah. So when you want to keep adding stuff on top of that, that's just so much time. The time it takes to play one game, three more have come out. And I feel that that is a helpless scenario. So if someone says, oh, I'm a gamer, you appreciate that. They you say time. respect. So be a gamer is a commitment. I wouldn't. You have to sacrifice your social life. I wouldn't have time to be a gamer because I see a about eight movies a week, sometimes yeah. more. I watch four Tom Hanks movies on Saturday um, and 20 movies over five days at Sundance. So I, I don't know, I just, I, but I love it. You know me. I'm like, okay, I've got, but an hour, I've got an hour and a half free. I'm going to put on a movie. Yesterday I put on Pulp Fiction in the background to relax me. Only I would put on Pulp Fiction to help me relax. And then I watched two movies last night and I didn't have to. That was just for fun. 
Yeah. So uh, how do I balance it? It's just my life. You make it a career. It's, and you go, oh, it's work. It's work. And it helps me working. Out. I know. But I have no social life. I just watch movies. Ding. But you do need balance. I think balance is really key. Like, you know, I and went I read for a hike this morning. Well. I, I went to the gym. I'm making sure that, like, our health is a big priority in my life. And seeing friends. Really. Uh, and spending time with Lee, she, and doing Geek Bomb and having a job, you know, all these kind of things. It's and, a lot. Yeah. But it's fun. Figure it out. If it doesn't feel like work, are you? <laughs> I think this is a joke uh, from Joshua Willingham. Lee, she hates reboots. No one told her about the Shawshank Retold. Let's keep it a secret here. What's the Shawshank Retold? It's, it's, I think it's a joke of like a reboot of Shawshank Redemption. Oh, he's being funny. He's all, it's a movie joke. I think so. Um, Tyler Myers, who's hey, Tyler. One of our good buddies, says, Great to have you back, ladies. What movie slash game describes both of your lives? So, can you think of a game that describes your life? Excuse me. Um, a movie that describes my life. I'd like to see myself as Amelie. Oh. Ah. <laughs> think this quirky girl trying to. Help out, help people out, you know, make the world a better place and then finding someone to fall in love with. But maybe I'm more misery. I'm trying to like distract me. I feel like I'm cat. <laughs> I'm, I could be cat in um, 10 Things I Hate About You from time to time. Cat. 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 <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, kind of like that high school angst. I mean, that was a lot of me in the chunk of my time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just having that wall up and being like, no, I don't need any guy, whatever. And then having that one person just kind of like take the wall down and be like, what's that there? I can, I see what you're doing. I know what's happening. Like quit it. And you're like, oh, yeah. There you go. Okay. Game wise, that's a little bit hard. I mean, it's not like every Thursday I go out and slay a few dragons. I wish I would. I don't know. My life is Tetris because I'm very organized. Dun, 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 like things in rows. Oh, yeah, that works. And uh, Why too? very neat. Tetris is kind of your answer for most. All games. Yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love Tetris. It's a good one. Hey. Um, if you could have a video uh, character come to life, says James, uh, that you could be your best friend, who would that be and why? Which video character would I want as my best friend? Oh, wow. Kind of sick. I would like Snow from Final Fantasy Thirteen. I would like to be his Sarah because he is he's willing to sacrifice like everything to be with his fiance. Oh, that's oh, nice. My God, so sweet. I love everyone into the snow. Um, <laughs> Let it snow. Let it snow. What what movie character would you like as a best friend? Movie character as a best friend. Um. I would love Louise from Thelma and Louise. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got that, She's though. a strong one. <laughs> and, uh, you, you know, Susan Sarandon, sassy as well. And Ooh. she's like, all right, keep together. We just got to get out of here. Let's do this. Oh, but, oh. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, I would like her. She's a good, a good best bud. Or Olaf. Oh, the snowman. Gives warm hugs. He's a snowman. Yeah, he gives nice warm hugs. Yeah, I like uh, uh, I like this from Garth Watson. It's more of a statement than a question. Yes. I'm drinking on a Wednesday and watching this instead of going out. Is there something wrong with me? <laughs> no. Yeah. No, because we're doing that exact thing. I oh, know. That's because there's something wrong with us. Oh. Um, Andrew H. Curtis says, what mid-range films coming out this year should we check out? That's you. Uh, mid-range movies, well... Yeah, it's hard these days when it's the age of the blockbuster versus the indie. So, yeah, I've got to think about this one. Stuck. Um, hmm. <clears throat> Let me think. I've got my things here. You talk- Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. What's is there one directed at me? Oh, look, we can just I say a few hellos. The, uh, oh. I like this one too. Which was that? Oh, here we go. Well, we'll. Oh, yes, I remember. Sorry. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to a film called The Walk. It's directed by Robert Zemeckis. It stars Joseph Gordon Levitt. And it is it's the fictional story of 
what we saw in the documentary Man on Wire, which I yes, you told me about this. You should all check out. So it's a French guy who in the 70s was a tightrope walker in the 70s when the World Trade Centers were being built, the two Twin Towers. He walked between them on a tightrope. The trailer for this looks terrifying and it is kind of mid-range film because it's not the super blockbuster, it's not the super indie, it's sort of in between. So I have a list of movies that I'm looking forward to this year. Oh, yeah. and then I, oh, and then of course, The Hateful Eight, Quentin Tarantino. Oh, right. Back with another revenge like, Western. <laughs> Back with another revenge Western uh, similar to Django Unchained and uh, Kurt Russell. He's going to work with him again and I like those two together. I liked Death Proof. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm one of the few who like That's the good. Grindhouse trilogy. Uh, definitely more death proof than Planet Terror, but I liked it. Yeah. Uh, I like this one. Yeah, and he played Stuntman Mike. Stuntman Mike. So the bumbling idiot says, what's one thing you wish you could do that the other can and what bugs you about each other? Which one should we do first? <laughs> What's one thing you wish that you could do that I can't? Contain my emotions. God, I wish I could. You can see, you can see everything. It's like, more are you upset? No, I'm fine. I just wish, especially in work situations, like there's that saying where it's like, keep your personal life at home, and when you go to work, go in work mode. No, if I'm feeling it, I'm showing it, yeah, and I then. really wish that I had the ability to just be like. Okay. You know what? Right now, I've got a job to do. It doesn't matter what's happening in my life. I could be angry. I could be upset. I could be elated, but I have a job to do. Yeah, I've always been able to do that. Uh, talk to my therapist about why, but I've always been able to just put it aside and be like, okay, I can work now. Hi, Alicia Malone. Welcome. Blah 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 blah. Um, one thing that I wish that you know, I you, could can do. Can you not cry? We're filming right now. Can you stop crying? See, this is kind of a. a a different side to to what you were saying just then i wish that i could be like you and just be myself with everyone because <laughs> you are completely yourself with anyone you meet whether it's a someone a stranger in the grocery store or <laughs> if it's a ceo of a huge company just always the same whereas i feel like okay i've got to be like this and i could be like this you know so um i think that is a good quality okay what bugs you about me where to begin? Oh, the water! <laughs> that's like my only oh, thing. We've water. been upset before, so I was like, wow, you guys live together. She must be annoying. What's her fault? And I'm like, honestly, the only thing. Oh, and you don't buy your toilet yeah, paper. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> toilet, toilet paper, paper. Because I steal it from you. <laughs> yeah, you steal my toilet paper. And uh, and you know what? I'm the one that has to buy bulk toilet. Do you know how, do you know how, do you know how like, it's really handy. Shattering that is to walk to the car it's with this handy, giant right? 24 rolls looking at like making eye contact and then like, oh, and I'm like, then I finish it. And yeah, I never fill up the water jug. I know, and I'll get the water out and be really light and I'll be like, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. And um, I really have to think about this as well. That's, that's good. It. That's something. Um, okay. <laughs> One thing, and you know it too. When you're driving and you start thinking, <laughs> no, I drive slowly. she drives really slow when she's thinking. She's like, mm. <laughs> I drive so slowly, and I'm like, okay, come on, we've got somewhere to go. We're gonna take, take the right soon, get in the right lane. I'm like, and I, I try yeah, to be, yeah, I try I'm to be. Thinking. I'm not thinking because you're going slow. I try to be sad. I'll be like, so you know, we've only got ten minutes. I, I guess we'll be okay. I guess. Um, but Maybe, uh, you went a bit like, faster, it would oh, help. Okay, sorry. sorry. I was just thinking, you're like, no, no, I know you, obviously. <laughs> Slow right down. And then you take your corners really fast right. out of nowhere. I had someone Slow. today take the corner so slowly, and I'm like, get a bit of moored action here. <laughs> Hit that corner. I'm great at corners, terrible on the streets and thinking. But uh, I take, every time I'm, no one else is in the car, I'm like, no, no, no. And I think about you, and I'm like, I wish I'll leave you to see this. Like all the it's got the look on her face like toilet paper. Probably <laughs> <laughs> what you Well, like this, you probably have a similar answer to this. Uh, Claudio <laughs> Mendes, what is your best scene and the most memorable? I think one of the best ever. Interesting. Uh, in 90 seconds, captured a lifetime 
time. A whole love. I watched that on the plane. And it that that kills it me every time plane. too. Don't. Sometimes I just put it on just for that section. And then I don't. I hate that. I would fast forward over no, that. It's so it's so lovely. It's so, so sad. It's so sad. The adventure book. Oh my gosh. What's what would be yours if it's not up for video me? games? Uncharted two. Wow, that's intense. So spoiler, but it's the don't beginning of think it. Think and drive, says Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Don't think and drive. It's a bloody idiot. <laughs> um, basically, you are Nathan Drake, and you wake up unconscious. And you're like, oh, ow, what the, where, where am I? What's going on? Oh, you're just hanging off the edge of a cliff in an open-ended train that's obviously been in an accident and you're about to fall off into oblivion. What? <laughs> and Heavy Rain is the same kind of gameplay where it's like, quick, press X now, otherwise you're going to get stabbed in the eye. And you're like, where is X? <laughs> I like this one for you while I look at some Twitter questions. This is for Maud. How much of the new Star Wars movie are you going to follow? Are you going to try and go in there? How much don't spoil three? Hard when you do a Star Wars Sean, show. Yeah, I host a Star Wars podcast, Jedi Alliance. If you are not following it on Pop Control Network and we have a Twitter and Facebook page, thanks for plugging. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we have to. I, I look at the news, if if not daily, then weekly about what's uh, been leaked about Star Wars. So given the choice, when I want to go spoiler free, not really. Um, I don't like to over hyper analyze the whole. Oh, they'll wear in that shade, and if you look back in the fourteenth second of this movie, then you'll see oh, that that's yeah. almost the same hue. So therefore, my theory is, I'm like, hey, 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 let it happen, just let it happen, let it breathe, have some fun. Uh, but you know what? Some theories I find really awesome, and uh, as the news breaks, I'm going to be chasing it. What's yeah. The um, I like this one just quickly. Uh, from Mike Marina C, nineteen eighty-eight. Oh, I got it up. Yeah. yeah, you two have my favorite popcorn talk shows. When you're gonna guest on each other? So we've been joking about this because I actually need a, a co-host for Monday's show. I would do it. I we could find something interesting to talk about. You know, what would you want to talk about out of well, all of Star Wars? What either would you want to talk about? I do find it really fascinating the way Star Wars changed the film industry. Yeah. So I'd be really interested to talk about that. Or you could talk about Star Wars from a non Star Wars fan, but as we said before, probably get a lot of hate for that. A lot of people are like, I don't understand you, you disappoint me. And it's like, that's kind of unfair because everyone has their own taste. And some people, they're allowed to not like Star Wars. You yeah. don't have to agree with this. Well, it's you just don't never, have to my, it was never my thing growing up. Yeah, and it was definitely a huge staple of my, my childhood. Yeah. Um, I mean, the top five questions for Star Wars are when was the first time you watched them? Mm -hmm. You probably answered that. Answer that yeah. Favorite of the movies? Yeah, probably I can answer, answer that. Uh, favorite character? Yeah, I can answer that. I know who it's not. <laughs> she always just, she needs to be quiet sometimes. She almost cried when I said that oh once. I was like, it's a little annoying. You watch me the. Two, three. Shh. Do you hear that? It's the sound of my heart breaking with a thousand pieces and then suddenly big silence. Um, uh, the third question is uh, favorite force power? Uh, yeah. Uh, favorite quote? Oh, yeah, I can do that. And would you turn to the dark side if that's a box? I can answer that. Okay. There you go. Maybe we Maybe might we do. Yeah, free. We've only got 11% battery left. So we're, we're gonna, we'll right. do this for like another 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Well, another good one, which I think. Uh, you could help me out with, and then I could answer the, the director side of things. Mm -hmm. So Cathal Coleman, hi, hi, CT82, who's a great profiler, uh, said, I'd love to see David Fincher direct a mini series of the video game Heavy Rain. Oh, oh. So if you tell me what Heavy Rain's about, because David Fincher is my favorite director, oh. I could tell you whether I think he'd be great with it. Heavy freaking rain. What is it about? It's is a it like murder chubby thriller. Chubby Rain from Bowfinger? No. So. It's, oh, you have to watch Bowfinger. It's hilarious. Bowfinger! It's uh, Eddie Murphy comedy. It's funny. Is it about, is it like a parody of Goldfinger? It's a parody of Hollywood. <laughs> oh. And there's a movie that they make with Steve Martin as well. And uh, they go, the aliens came down in the rain. It was Chubby Rain. Anyway. So it's like, tell me about this one. Um. Okay, Heavy Rain is a suspense thriller. It's it plays That's out picture. like a movie. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so basically, you are playing this guy. I forget his name because I haven't played it for like I, I played it three years ago, four, five, final answer, five years ago. Um, but he's a father, and he's uh, he lost it. I think he lost his first son uh, due to natural like whatever an accident. I think a train hit him or whatever it was. Uh, and his wife's left or dead. Oh God, this is so vague. But he basically finds out that his son has been kidnapped. And he's in a storm drain. He cannot get out, and there's torrential rain. And in three days, his son will drown. Well, yeah, Fincher would be great at that. Can now the imagine? killer, dark. Is, oh, it's so full on dark now, cinematography. It's called um mm. that he's called the Origami Killer because every time he kills, he plays his, a little. He loses his origami. Yes, yeah. So the. Obviously, the police are involved and the detective has to work closely with the father to try and piece these clues together. Not only do you see these things unfold through the eyes of the father, but you become the detective and you look at crime scenes and I um, mm. point and click on different clues and you try and unfold what's going on. Uh, he, The father starts on a relationship and he doesn't know whether to tell this girl or right, about I these prove things. It. And then, <gasps> skip forward, there's some mad scientist because he breaks into a house and then he gets strapped to a chair and it's like, you're about to get the knife in the eye kind of deal. Press X now and follow these sequence of buttons. And you're like, oh, my God, I forgot. <laughs> and it was so great. Honestly, you'd love it. I like to think it's a little bit like it's kind of like an SVU on roids. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds interesting. And, and you know who did it? <gasps> what? Yeah! That's crazy. And he's killed before. This is like the origami killer has like been around for decades. Like I could see Fincher doing that and doing a great job of that. The twist. And I would, yeah, the twist and the the mood of it. So I'm in because he does procedurals really well. Like we're mystery trying to figure things out. It, great. And yes, I like that Hugh Jackman quoted Maud, if I'm feeling it, I'm showing it. Yeah. That is Maud. People are disappointed me because I hate being walks. Chubby around. Yep. Look, like death yeah, proof. Not, oh, I'm not alone in liking death proof. Should I look at some? Alicia, we should get Maud a bumper sticker that says "Think later, drive faster." Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yes, is please. Like, Intentionally bad. Oh, have you guys had any awkward interviews yet this year? This year, I haven't had any awkward ones, year. but last year, Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> yeah, but notorious notorious. So bad, and apparently, according to I did it for ABC <laughs> theaters, and according to everyone there, I did the best out of anyone so what? far. They were like, "Actually, you did a really good job." He laughed at one point, which is great. Was it like this though, and he gave you good answers. No, he was actually like, "Ha ha ha!" And I was like, "I've won you." And then the next question was like, and "That's his face. It's on the back of your phone. Is it still there?" Yeah, yeah. I I put it here. So that if I ever start thinking that I'm just too good, I'll just look at this picture. Uh, you're you going to get it? the angle going more. Huh. Yeah, that's kind of it. Look, you can see that picture and I know that I suck, that I'm just really stupid. What? That's a horrible outlook. <laughs> that's so no, it just makes me laugh. It makes me laugh because his face was like the whole time. But he's notoriously bad and, and actually I had a good one compared with the others but so far this year it's been all good I my oh, except actually Johnny Depp was weird oh yeah but everyone experienced that you finish the what about yours well mine was we won't insert actor's name but me going on a huge rant about how all actors are cheaters and not knowing that he's known for being a cheater <laughs> yeah you came out and I was like do you know he cheats on his wife regularly? Yeah, and I'm in yeah. there going, you know what? You can't find love in Hollywood because they're all actors and actors all, they don't understand what mon not monogamy is. They will never be with the one person <laughs> and they will end up cheating. And I was like, and it was, did I didn't know realise then, no, but I saw okay. it get very uncomfortable very quickly and I was like, there. I've so got there. a question here. Okay. It's from Sandy Young as well. Our uh, thing seems really exciting. It's better now. Uh, Sandy Hughes with, oh, you guys are getting all goo-goo over each other with the best friend question. I wasn't expecting that good of an answer. And I'm like, yay. Uh, but she also says, who's the better wing girl? Oh, why did I pick this question? Because <laughs> you think that you are. <laughs> <laughs> think? Well, there was a time when you wing girl me. I wing girl you. I feel like all the time. <laughs> Every time we go out, you're wing girling me? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. Are you a good wing girl? Yes. 
you are good because you're just like tell me about yourself and remind me of your name and i'm like oh yeah yeah i do that i do that and you're good because i'll be like okay molly can you please come with me now oh yeah okay yes i know i'll get home from at like 10 o'clock i've been working all day and i'm sick as a dog it's like oh and she's like can we go out for drinks please come i really want you to come i'm like yeah, but sad I was like, please, I'm nervous. I'm, I'm scared to talk to this person. Can you just come with me? I might not know anyone. Or I like this guy and I don't know. And then you're like, okay, I'll come. What's a, I'm just uh, trying to think yeah. of a good time. That you, surely there's been a time where you wingled me. Well, like, I, I feel like there's, uh, I won't reveal it, but I feel like there's times when you're like, determined? We'll be out and you'll be like, I'm determined. This is going to happen. Oh, yeah. And I'll, I'll like, like give in me, the background. Give me, give me just 20 more minutes. Or like give Halloween. Me. Oh, you, you were know, a good wing girl there. Or when I looked at you and I was like, I want to go, go home go. now. I don't I like I was this. like, we've been here for 40 minutes. You're like, it's no. 9.30. Yeah. I did. I sat you down. I was just like, Alicia, it's Halloween. We're dressed up. It's 9.30. I was like, I don't go. go. I don't want to be here. Like, Everyone's scary. I wouldn't take no for an answer. Yeah. And I waited in the background till you're ready to go. <clears throat> so that's good. You got yelled at. You got yelled at as well. <laughs> Not by more. Not by, by the person me. she was with. Why I order? I wasn't with him. the person that you're talking to at the time. Thank you. Uh, um, uh, what else have we got? Witcher three. This is gaming stuff. The Alicia one for you. Classic <gasps> noir. Classic film noir. Classic film noir. I have to go. Casablanca. And if you haven't already heard mm. the uh, Alicia Lloyd's film school on the Napsub Files podcast, you should listen to that. I'm teaching Ken Naps up from Schmoes No all about classic films. So he watched that one with me and I loved it. Also loved Double Indemnity and Molten Salad. That one was from Mark Tordai. I love Mark. <clears throat> My turn now, Rattlehead Jake. Jake Robertson said, if I had to choose, would I rather play Witcher 3 and just that game or play any game except Witcher 3? Dude, any game except Witcher 3. I'm not going to sacrifice every single freaking game for one if I haven't even played it. That's too much of a risk. I was not going to pick. <laughs> um, what else we got? Well, let's see. Oh, here we go. One more from Jason Haddon. What is your favorite American food? And what is the American food that you think is weird or gross? Oh. You guys put favorite American food. Do you know what mine would be? Fried pickles. Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese, fried pickles. I became a mac and cheese connoisseur. We don't really do that back home in Australia. It's just not a thing at all. So I was like, mac and cheese, what's this? Obviously, it's mac and cheese. Macaroni but, uh, and cheese. The first one that I had just took my breath away, and then I went on a crusade to find the best mac and cheese ever. And four months later and 10 pounds later, I discovered it was the first place that I went to. <laughs> <laughs> and I never liked pickles before I moved to America. You know, at McDonald's in Australia, you people just fling it up on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the gherkins or the pickles because we don't like them. And then I discovered oh, fried pickles and that was the both the worst and best day of my life. Mm. The worst because now I always have to have them wherever I go and the best because I love them so much. But as for a food, I guess because I'm vegetarian, chicken and waffles is a weird concept to me. It's just like in Australia, your sweet stay sweet and your savoury stay savoury. Yeah. So combining uh, a dinner savoury staple with a breakfast sweet with item. With syrup and everything. Yeah. I think it's just when like maple syrup goes on bacon or it goes, you know. Yeah. Like when they cross streams, the sweet and savoury. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, wow, what are you doing? And I also <laughs> find it strange that the um, like scrambled eggs with fruit. That to me seems like it should be. There's a lot of fruit thing. in savory salads as well. Like here's yeah. a bunch of strawberries in your Caesar salad, and it's mm-hmm. like, and lots of dressing. Although I have also discovered something really great, which I think that you might like, which also might be the worst day of my life because mm-hmm. I love it so much. Cheese pizza dipped in ranch dressing. I mean, uh, it's so good. Oh, uh, it's really my. good. God, I discovered ranch dressing on the very first show that I hosted and I asked what catering was wow. and I put on towns in that week because I was like, yeah, ranch could go on that. Ranch could go on. I'll just take a bowl of ranch, please. And so that cheese pizza is also my favourite thing. Yeah, so cheese pizza dipped in ranch. Amy Rose Eisenbach from AMC, she does this. And when we're at Sundance, I was like, what do you know about the dressing? And then I was like, 
I'll try some. Oh my gosh, it's really good. They actually, uh, a lot of the like Pizza Hut or the chain places will provide ranch dipping sauce for pizza. Ooh. And I was like, this this is why obesity happens, <laughs> but it's the best. <laughs> You know, it's, oh, here's a really fatty pizza. Would you like to put it in the fattiest sauce? Yeah. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. It's like when you put parmesan cheese on your cheese pizza, really, like an extra cheese. I always add cheese to me. Okay, any more before we sign off? Uh, 4% battery? Oh, my. Uh, Harry Potter podcast, Alicia's Let's Play, favorite book series. What post it? Well, there's a lot. Attack, you are putting the attack in your name. <laughs> Uh, would we do a would I do a Harry Potter podcast? Yes, I was actually thinking today. It's like geek, the geek sphere is so big. What are the aspects of geek that I love the most? It would be Star Wars, Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, Firefly, mm. Zelda, Zelda. Yeah, I was going to say you're going to throw a game one in there too. Zelda. Yeah, nice. Um, I like this one. Favorite book series? Oh, my favorite book series. Um, I really did love Harry Potter. Oh my god, so good! I failed Japanese because of so Harry Potter. much. I, I I spent all night reading it. I had the talk series. That's probably one of the only series of books that I've read because everything else I read just a uh, one-off. For as well as about oh. time in fantasy, you don't ever have one book, and also, there's not a trio. There's like twenty-seven. When I was young, the Saddle Club. So I'm gonna rescue Alicia. So cool. <laughs> Uh, I actually so read a series cool. by R.A. Salvatore and it's called The Legend of oh. Drizzt and it's about a dark Drizzt. elf called a drow. See, I feel like when I was younger I read more series and now it's more just standalone books. <laughs> Is there a fun fact about Goosebumps that you'll never forget? Because for me, book 19 was about the killer whale. It was about the killer whale? Mm -hmm. I remember Beach Party. I loved Beach Party. I think I've got it. Night of the Looming like... Dummy? I was like, no. No. <laughs> and quickly... Garth Watson, with Valentine's Day coming, have you seen City of Lights with Charlie Chaplin? Yes, it is a beautiful movie. It's very romantic, romantic comedy. Charlie Chaplin. I thought he doesn't speak. How does he get romantic and how is it a comedy? It's a silent movie. Oh, Charlie Chaplin is one of the most famous comedians ever. <laughs> romantic comedy. <laughs> no, <it's not> like, <laughs> Oh, hold on. Huge Jackman wants to tell me that there's no mac and cheese in Australia. Yeah, but not like you don't understand. No, not on this level. I used to eat, back in Australia, I used to eat the Kraft mac and cheese. That's all there is. Butter. And it's like a powdered cheese and you but add a bit of water yeah, and it tastes like ass. At at restaurants, they'll do like a mac high and end with restaurant. Truffle oil or this really interesting thing. And it costs you like $19 for a side of mac and cheese because it's the shit. It is. It is. Alrighty. Well, I think. That's a good place to wrap it up. Factory is about to go. We Factory's do have a bunch of other questions that we are reading right now, but we obviously cannot answer because we are at battery. But we will make sure that we comment in the comments section, which is where the comments are, and um, <laughs> we'll write back to all of them. So keep them coming. Even if you didn't watch this live, we will still answer your questions as well. That has been an hour. Wow. And then, oh, you guys? You're That's really going. Lovely. I know. Don't cry. Okay. <laughs> Actually, go ahead. Cry. It is really sweet. I just don't want anyone to screenshot like the last 10 seconds of that. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, love you, leave you. This has been, uh, have we ticked? Tick. Boom! Oh. Not our best, still a bit rusty. Love Bye. you, guys.